Day 50 of the war in Ukraine and there's a big update coming in from South Ukraine. Ukraine is now claiming a big success off the coast of Odessa. Ukraine has claimed to have hit the lead Russia Slava class warship Moskva. Now, Ukraine has said that two Neptune anti-ship missiles have been fired to target Russian Black Sea Fleet flagship. Moscow is one of the largest and most potent Russian Navy warships. Reports say that Russia has at this point claimed there's a fire on board the warship which is resulting in serious damage. As far as Ukraine is concerned, the governor of Odessa has confirmed that Ukraine targeted and hit the ship with a guided missile cruiser and Neptune missile. So this is the big breaking news that's coming in. A huge development and one that will be viewed as a massive setback for Russia. We've been talking about how along the coast of Odessa also uh, we've been seeing an all-out fight between Ukrainian and Russian forces along the Black Sea. And what comes as a big development on day 50 of this war and what will be considered as a big, big win for Ukraine. Moscow, which is a Russian warship, a lead Russian warship, has been hit by Ukrainian missiles. This is Ukraine now fighting back at a time when Russia has already warned them, saying if they continue this kind of an assault, Russia won't hesitate from targeting command centers in Kyiv. I want to bring in Gaurav Samant, who's been tracking every update coming in from Ukraine. He's joining us live from Kyiv. Gaurav, put this in context for us. Why is this going to be a huge strategic win for Ukraine? On day 50 of this battle, this is a huge win for Ukraine, sinking the Moscow or targeting the Moscow, uh, which is a large 612 foot long guided missile cruiser of the Russian Navy. This is like the flagship of the Russian Black Sea Fleet and this has been targeted by Ukraine and this has now been confirmed by the governor of Odessa. Now, they've said that they used two Neptune missiles and this is amazing that Ukraine has uh, still has access to its anti-ship batteries despite 50 days of relentless targeting of air defense assets, missiles by Russia in the past 50 days uh, by the aircraft, by the missiles, by the rockets. Um, and this is a very complex uh, uh, system uh, to be used in a way. It, it takes five trucks. This is a truck truck mobile missile system that has been used. So it has the lead truck, which has the, the, the missiles, uh, Neptune anti-ship missiles. Uh, they had the lead truck, they had the supply truck, they had two radar trucks, plus a command post center. They brought it somewhere around Odessa, knew where the Black Sea Fleet uh, had had its flagship, Moskova, and then they targeted it. This is simply, uh, you know, an act of, it's a big, uh, it's a big military feat uh, that they've achieved sinking the Moskova. And uh, of course, Russians say that there was a fire on board. Now, why is this big? The Black Sea Fleet has been blockading the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, coast of Ukraine for the past 50 days. Remember on the 24th of February, it's the same ship that actually targeted uh, sailors on, on a lighthouse 24th of February when they asked sailors on a lighthouse on the Snake Island to surrender and those sailors said, uh, you know, words to the effect that we will not and they were all quartered, they were all killed in, in cold blood, uh, all the sailors. This in a way is Ukraine getting its revenge. And uh, Gaurav, has there been any statement that's coming from Russia on this development? Because, you know, the timing of this is also crucial. The fact that Russia just a few hours ago put out a very clear warning that if Ukraine continues these kind of assaults, these kind of strikes, Russia will hit back by targeting command centers in Kyiv. This actually signals, as you very rightly pointed out, Akshita, a very serious escalation in the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. And Ukraine is saying that we are not fighting a defensive, they are not fighting a defensive war. They are fighting an offensive uh, war where they're taking the war into the Russian camp. There have been several strikes uh, that have been reported in, in Donetsk and Luhansk region on ground. And that's why President Zelensky, when he speaks to every head of state or government, is asking for offensive weapons, uh, tanks and fighter jets to be able to take the battle um, into the Russian camp. The fact that they've used these Neptune systems to target um, the Black Sea Fleet flagship. This is a ship 
that was not only blockading the Black Sea, this was a ship that was targeting Odessa and shore-based assets uh, of uh, Ukraine uh, for the past 50 days. Uh, this is a ship that is armed with anti-ship warfare, anti-submarine warfare, anti-air. It has the S-300 system. Uh, it has uh, anti-ship uh, 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 missiles and it has a large number of missiles on board and yet uh, this ship was targeted and from information that we've been able to gather from uh, officials in Ukraine, they first sent a TB2 Bayraktar unmanned combat aerial vehicle and the Russians got diverted. Uh, they started targeting that and that's when two Neptune missiles went and hit is what Ukraine uh, Navy, uh, Army is is uh, uh, telling uh, uh, journalists here in Kyiv. So this does mark the presence of potent military power that Ukraine continues to enjoy and a serious escalation. The Russians, of course, this also means that they're targeting their their amphibious assault on Odessa does look uh, a little difficult now with with this ship gone, uh, Moscow gone. If you remember, Saratov was another landing ship that was targeted sometimes mid March, and mm -hmm. amphibious assault now looks very difficult because despite not having a potent navy, Ukraine has been able to target two big ships of the Russian Navy. And very, very clearly targeted attacks there by Ukraine. What they made very, very clear is that Russia, 50 days into this war, can't afford to sit back. Ukraine is still fighting back. As you said, they're no longer on the defensive. They're now on the offensive as well, Gaurav. There was a conception in the last few weeks that perhaps Russia uh, is, uh, you know, in the driver's seat as far as southern Ukraine areas like, you know, the Black Sea coast, the Sea of Azov was, goes, and that's concerned. But that's clearly not the case here. Ukraine is continuing to maintain that we're going to fight it out for these port cities and for these coastlines. You know, actually, that this is it, this is this war is at, at a very interesting stage right now. What's happening in Mariupol? Because of relentless Russian attacks uh, for the past 50 days, um, the fact that Ukraine was unable to supply or resupply some of its troops inside, there are reports that over a thousand Ukrainian soldiers, um, uh, you know, gave up their arms and surrendered uh, because they ran out of ammunition. Mariupol has fallen. Ukraine intends to uh, take it back. How it remains a big challenge uh, because uh, do they have the wherewithal to do? so. Uh, but this is the situation in Mariupol. In Donbass region, Russia has made major inroads. In fact, uh, the Russian forces, apart from Donbass, appear to be moving on the other axis, uh, you know, from Kharkiv in the east towards Zeprosia. And that is where it's a big, big challenge in case they're coming closer to Zeprosia. Um, that's a nuclear power station. Uh, uh, you know, next to that is De uh, Dnieper, where we were. Um, uh, and Dnieper is actually bracing for a big Russian attack. So the Russian forces are actually trying to slice this country uh, um, into into parts. They take they've taken away the Donbass region to an extent. Uh, they're trying to get into Zaporozhye and Dnieper. That's where the big battles are going to take place in the days and weeks ahead. And they've threatened Kiev. Uh, this even as four heads of state, um, including Litwa Lithuania and Latvia uh, and Poland, their heads of state have visited Kiev. They've been to Borodyanka. They are promising more weapons and aid and supplies. And Ukraine wants to fight back, but. While they've managed this big, big attack, Ukraine claims it's a big attack. Russia, of course, says that there was a fire on board, which led to the serious crippling uh, slash sinking uh, of Moscow. But it's a huge blow, huge blow to Russian Navy and the Black Sea Fleet. If Moscow, their flagship, which is a guided missile cruiser, uh, you know, 612 feet long, foot long, uh, 500 sailors and officers on board with the with S-300 surface to air defense system with, uh, uh, you know, anti-ship, anti-submarine warfare equipment on board, helicopters on board. If that ship has sunk, it's a huge blow to Moscow. Uh, and what's very clear, a big takeaway for Russia today is going to be that they cannot afford to take things lying down. They cannot afford to take Ukraine's challenge lightly at this point. Ukraine making it very clear that we are also on the offensive here. We'll do everything we can to protect our soil. Gaurav, we're going to keep coming across to you for these updates and much, much more for the moment. Thank you for joining us.